Okay, so yes, this is the Piglet uh, website, uh, which is our slide for today. Um, <laughs> the rest of the uh, proceedings today will be uh, typed in by the able Alex. Hopefully, able Alex. Um, so yes, Piglet is a new, um, about two years old, uh, one and a half years old, um, graphics, multimedia, library, um, and gaming, obviously, uh, for Python. Um, one of the big selling points with it is that it's um, cross-platform, needing no binary installation. So it's just straight Python, straight Python code. Uh, and it n utilizes all of the stuff that's installed in modern operating systems, like OpenGL drivers and things, as long as you're not using Vista, which we're not, so that's okay. Um, Piglet's just hit 1.0 after considerable effort. Um, this is kind of the core release. Um, with all of the, 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 the core building blocks installed, and it's been tested across a bunch of different platforms. Most of the development time was sort of, um, was working through API issues and, and, and platform dependency issues. Um, it's solid now, and we're working towards 1.1, which is going to add on a bunch of nice things that we'll hopefully get a chance to talk about um, in the second half to the second third. Of, of our time slot. Um, and what we're going to do today is just develop a very simple game um, using Piglet by way of demonstrating uh, what you can do. Um, so if you want to try and keep up, you can, but we're just going to keep going. So um, we'll see how we go. Um, but the first thing you have to have uh, in a Piglet application is a window. Um, this gives you a handle on the basic stuff that the operating system is going to give you in terms of putting stuff up on the screen. Um, the second thing you've got to have is a very simple event loop, uh, which basically tells the window to interact with the operating system, thank you very much, um, to interact with the operating system to say, you know, there's a window here or has the window been moved and updated or, or do whatever it needs to do. Um, we've got a convenience thing on the window such that uh, if the window close button is pressed or the escape key is pressed, uh, the window gets a, an attribute has exit, which is true. So then we can have this very simple while loop which um, exits when the close button, window close button is pressed. Um, yeah, we won't talk about that. Okay, so. You saw that the window had done it, uh, had garbage contents. So the next thing we want to do really is clear the window and do some stuff in it. So uh, we do clear the window by invoking w.clear. Now we're also running a, du uh, a uh, double buffered environment here. Um, so when you clear it, it clears a drawing buffer and then we have to flip the buffers to make that visible on the screen. So now we get a black background. Um, it's cleared to the default clear color which is black, and we'll get back to that um, in a few minutes. But the next important thing, um, oh, hang on, let, let's, show, let, let, let's show captions. Yes, so there's a bunch of options that you can add onto the window creation, uh, one of which is to give it a caption which appears in the uh, window title bar. We have a window. Um, you can also supply uh, dimensions, um, and whether it's full screen or not, and there's a bunch of other options as well. Uh, position, style, you can make it be a, a toolbar or, or um, borderless or all sorts of stuff. Um, so yes, the next thing we're going to do is put an image up inside the window. So we need to import the image module, which we can then use to load uh, our PNG from disk. Um, sorry. We're going to use a bunch of pictures and sounds, and if you want them, they're on piglet.org slash linuxconf. You can download zip file all. Right. Um, by default, uh, piglet supports PNG. Oh, does it support anything else from PNG? It does. Absolutely no support. Oh, bitmap? PNG. Oh, okay. Yeah, just PNG. But <laughs> odds on, your operating system will let you support a bunch of other stuff like JPEGs and bitmaps and. Hell, if you're on an OS X machine, you get PDF and a bunch of other stuff as well. So it can, generally speaking, you can load a bunch of stuff. Uh, and we can then paste that up into the screen using a blit operation, of, uh, blit, a blit method on the image, 
and we can paste that up at position 00. zero. Um, now, unlike some other systems, the zero coordinate is down the bottom of the screen. Some other systems have it up the top. In Piglet, um, very much like OpenGL, Y goes up. So it starts at zero and goes up. Um, that doesn't look so pretty. I mean, it looks kind of pretty, but it doesn't look very pretty. Um, there's a problem there that the blue should be blended into the black. So what we're going to do now is introduce some very simple OpenGL commands. Because again, Piglet is built on top of OpenGL uh, in large part. Uh, and we're going to now enabling alpha channel blending. The PNG has alpha channel in it, and we're going to now use that to blend from the image into the background. The GL blend, blend funk stuff is boilerplate. You just copy it and paste it into your code. You don't need to really understand what it's doing. But now we have a lovely blended image. <laughs> Okay, and then, as I said, you just copy and paste that bit. Um, you know, yeah, that's easy. So, where were the images again? Uh, Piglet.org forward slash LinuxConf. Just one word. Um, yeah, that would have been good to put up. So. Uh, right, so that's all very good, um, but it's not very interactive. So what we'll do now is we'll interact with it and move the ship around on the screen. Um, as a part of that, we are going to start to encapsulate some of our game in some actual data structures, as we do when we're good little programmers. Uh, so what we're doing is we're creating a very simple class which stores the image that we're drawing up on the screen and its position on the screen and a way to update that um, the position of our, our uh, you know, player, sh player ship on the screen. Um, and we also you know, have a little draw method because that you know, encapsulates that nicely as well. Um, Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, okay, so uh, to actually, in, we, well, we can actually show that running right now. So this will do exactly the same thing as what we had before, except we've encapsulated it. <laughs> uh, but what we can do now is we can have a method on the player, which is a specially named method to handle mouse motion events. Um, so we're going to write this uh, mouse event handler, which uh, takes, which is going to use the x value from the motion, the mouse motion event, and then what we do is we tell the window about that event handler um, just by pushing the player object onto the window, the, the using push handlers, and it automatically says, right, well, there's a method called on mouse motion, uh, so I'll invoke that whenever we get a mouse, a mouse motion event, and so now the player moves around when we move the mouse. And that's all useful. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's, um, that's all nice. And one of the nice things we've done here is we've kind of encapsulated the concept of a, you know, an image with location on, on screen. And there's a name for that, it's called sprite in, in general you know, 2D gaming parlance. Um, we're going to have a few of these sorts of things on screen eventually. So we're going to make a base class called Sprite. And then from that, we can create our, our player. And we can also create bullets that the player is going to shoot. And the aliens, in fact, when we get aliens. Well, that's giving you a way, isn't it? They're going to shoot bullets too. Um, so we can use the same base class. Obviously, there's no on-mouse motion for the bullets. The bullets get shot out by the player. So we, um, given that we're going to use the bullet class for both the player bullets and the alien bullets, uh, we need to know which direction they're going. So we've got a dx, uh, sorry, a dy for delta y, or the uh, change in y. Um, and then uh, we will need an update method, which we will um, be calling to update the position of the, uh, the bullets, given that. Um, the direction it's moving in. Um, Alright, so 
what we need to do is you're actually... You're updating methods of the type of... Sorry? Sorry? You're updating methods of the type of self.dy. Self.no? No, self.y plus equals self.dy. Yes, yes, good point. The... All right, so we also need to update the boards. But we don't actually have any yet. We just have an empty list. So, yes. That's why this is code going to be online at the end. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, this is why I said you're probably going to have trouble keeping up. Um, so, yes, we've got, well, we've got a bullets array, but it's empty. So, what we need to do is actually create bullets. So, we'll have a new event handler on our player uh, class which handles mouse button presses. So, whenever the mouse uh, whenever the player presses a button, doesn't matter which one, because at the moment we're not being too picky, um, this, this method will be called, and we'll create a new bullet, which we'll add into the bullets list, um, just on the top of the player, with a positive dy, which will then shoot it up from the player, um, up off the screen, at the speed of two, <laughs> two somethings. <laughs> and we press the mouse button, and up it goes. Look at that, bullets! Hey, fancy. Okay, one of the problems is that, um, okay, this is a fast computer. Um, yeah. What determines the speed there? Well, that's <laughs> what we're getting to. Yeah. Excellent, yes. question. Excellent question. I'm glad you asked. Um, I'm just going to send you just, Oh, he's just going to send to the bullet on the ship. Oh, rather than yeah. the on the side. Okay, um, so, yes. We've, we've, as I said, this is a fast computer. Um, I've got an EPC which is a little bit slower, <laughs> a lot slower. And you know, everybody's computers are different speeds. So this is basically the speed that we've of two here is basically being rate limited by the speed of the computer. What we want to do is introduce some uh, other way of, man of managing that speed, and so we can use the piglet clock to um, keep uh, to keep track of time passing. Um, and by invoking the uh, clock tick uh, function inside our event loop each time we go around, we can find out how much time has passed, and then we can use that to calculate how far something has moved based on how fast it should be moving. Uh, and so then our number here, our magic number here, is actually a number in pixels per second. And so now it moves at a slightly different rate. <laughs> But now it's moving at 200 pixels per second. You could change that 200 to 400 to show them. You could measure it. You could measure it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's not. Um, so that's how we, we control, very simply control um, animation speed. There's other ways of, of, of scheduling animation, um, but I don't think we're going to be getting into that. We are. Right, we are going to be getting into later. that. Good, but later. Yes. Uh, right. So, ah, now we need some enemies. All right, so something we can shoot. So again, these are um, just more sprites. They have a different image, obviously. Um, and we're just going to create a simple array of them up at the top of the screen um, that we can shoot at. Hello. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> Is there anything else you can talk about enemies? How are we doing? Any questions while he's talking? Yes. What about the memory leak? Sorry? You've got a memory leak. I'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Good. Explain to everyone what it is. Yeah. Uh, as the bullets go off the top of the screen, they're not deleted. Yep. Yeah. Well spotted. Thank you. You also noticed that performance didn't degrade whatsoever. Oh, you could have <laughs> a veritable lot of I actually thought that's what you were going to talk about when you said because it's Fast computer. Oh yeah, you yeah. Won't yeah. Notice well, the memory impact in, until after several million bullets. Modern OpenGL implementations mean that even my little EPC um, does extraordinarily well uh, with a large number of sprites on screen. Um, oh, okay. So here we have a very simple loop um, that just creates a bunch of enemies across the top of the screen. And what we can do is then inside our main loop just draw them. So we have some enemies. Only they don't go boom. <laughs> so, we need to detect collision between the bullets and the enemies. Fortunately, this is really easy. Okay, he's going to be doing a bit of typing, but it's actually really easy. 
because you're just detecting whether the, the center of the, of the bullet is inside a rectangle which is the enemy. This is a good candidate for cut and paste. Okay, so, <laughs> um, okay. so um, one of the uh, unfortunate side effects of this sort of, um, uh, well, this approach, I mean, it's not unfortunate, it's just something you have to be mindful of, is that we're, um, you know, we're looping over all of our bullets and, um, and invoking the update method on each of the bullets in turn. If the bullet hits something, we want to remove it from play. Oh, and by the way, there's our um, stopping it from going way off the top. Or way off the bottom, when we have them coming down as well. But, um, as I say, we're looping over the bullets list, um, and then there's a chance that this update method might remove a bullet from that list, which is a big no-no, um, as people who program Python will know, and people who don't program Python now know, you don't rip and modify a list when you're iterating over it. <laughs> so eventually, Alex will get down to the bit where we're iterating over the list. And oh, you already did that. Oh, well, you did one of them. You haven't done the bullet time. Yeah, you haven't done the bullet Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a there's a version of it where we take a copy of the the list that we might end up modifying um, so that we can iterate over that copy and then remove from the original list. So if the bullet goes off the top or the bottom of the screen, we remove it from the bullet's lift, list, and if it hits the enemy, then we remove the enemy and the bullet. And I think that's all we have to do there. We'll do that bit with that bit later, yes. Okay, so, bang bang. Jolly good <laughs> shot, old chap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're not shooting back though, are they? Um, something we'll do before we jump on a little bit is we'll talk about the mouse pointer, which makes it a little bit easy because you can just kind of move the cursor up and click on them. And, and, yeah. So um, what we can do is we can make the mouse pointer go away, um, which has the, an additional, uh, and, and we can also make the mouse pointer captured by the, the window so that it can't move outside the window because um, the last thing you want is to be madly clicking and then click outside the window and you die. So we enable the exclusive mouse, um, we call set exclusive mouse, as you may have noticed Alex typing, which basically says the mouse is exclusive for this window. Uh, one of the side effects of that is that um, the X and Y coordinates of the mouse are no longer any use to us because it's effectively locked into the window. Um, so we have to use the amount the mouse has moved rather than the position of the mouse. So instead of saying self.x equals x, we just add on the movement of the mouse. And we're also going to uh, limit the ship so that it doesn't move off of the window, window as well. So now you can't just click on the enemies to kill them. It's still a bit easy though, isn't it? Because they're not shooting back. Like yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's um, use that clock scheduling thing that I talked about before to schedule enemies to shoot back at us. Yeah, we must do. Okay, um, and we'll. Oh yes, random. We want a random enemy to shoot down at us. Um, all right, so yeah, we're just going to define a, a simple little function um, that invokes one of the randomly one of the enemies to shoot at us, um, and then we can schedule that with the piglet clock to be called once every second. So, people who haven't programmed Python are probably, hopefully, going, "Oh, gee, that's nice, isn't it?" <laughs> Random dot choice. I like that one. <laughs> Just takes a random sample from a, a, a sequence. Um, so that gets us a random enemy, and then from that enemy, um, just underneath the enemy, we place a bullet with a negative dy, which is a bit faster, just to spice things up. And then we can schedule that with the clock. And uh, hopefully that will make them shoot 
randomly at us. Yes, that's better. That's still good stuff, isn't it? I can't do it like three times a month. <laughs> okay, it's still random. <laughs> it's, it is definitely random. Uh, okay, so um, hang on, go back, because there's something that's missing. Yeah, yeah, that bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we just want we want the, the enemy bullets to uh, fly with the plane, obviously, to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, and at this point, we can then have our basic uh, win lose condition. Again, the um, the same collision function. Uh, we're just testing the bullet point against the um, against the the rectangle that defines the player. Uh, and do we have a win? We do. Down in the loop, we can have a win. That's going to print out a lot. <laughs> you win a lot. <laughs> okay, so... Got a little bug fix when you're at it? Oh, yeah. We don't want to try and choose from an empty list, because that would be bad. <laughs> Okay, so now you lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we. Um, okay, this is still cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that's still pretty easy. Um, <laughs> although, let, yeah, let's do the, the. Oh, we'll do this other thing first. Yes. Okay, so the printing up to the console not very interactive in terms of the game. So what we'll do now is actually print up those messages inside the game window by using the Piglet font module, which just lets us render text to the screen. Now, if we don't specify a name to the font load, then we get some default font, which I think is Arial, because um, that's pretty much available everywhere, so it's predictable. It's Helvetica? On oh, no. OS oh, Helvetica on no, OS 10. Okay. But they're very similar. Similar enough. So we're just going to center the um, the text on the screen, um, and we can dynamically just assign the text um, as a value on the message font text object, and that will just change whatever the text is saying. So we can put in winner or loser as appropriate. Um, on that text. Oh, oops. Oh, I'm not. Uh, it's my first mistake. That's a pretty <laughs> good effort, I think. Mm. <laughs> okay, so now when you lose. Oh, oh. Oh, you draw it. Yeah, you've got to draw it. Second step. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bit ahead of yourself, that's all. So, message.draw and die. There you go. Yeah. Game over. Uh, it's not a very pretty font, though. I think we've got a prettier font, haven't we? Mm. Yeah. Alright. Uh, there's tons of... Um, are the two Creative Commons talkers here? Speakers here? No, they're not, are they? No. There's tons of Creative Commons and free stuff out there, of which I believe this font is one. I'm not sure, actually. Didn't say. Didn't no, license. License. no license. No license. Oh, well, well, Freefonts.com. <laughs> 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 okay, some of those you've got to be a bit worried about. I looked at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was the right one. This was, this was absolutely the right one. You've got to see this one. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, as I say, though, this game is still a bit simple. Let's make the enemies move so that they can at least do a little bit of a dodge across the top of the screen. Uh, so we're just going to move, make the enemies move, again using a. Um, are we doing this as a, re a registered thing? Or no, we're just, no. Oh, no, we're just calling an update. Yeah. Once. Okay. You. All right. So we're just going to have the whole row of enemies move across the screen until they hit one side and then move back again. Um, <coughs> and. Oh yes, we're not going to schedule this with the clock because um, to, to, to invoke it every every uh, time we go around the event loop because we don't want to invoke it when there are no enemies and it's just a little bit easier um, in terms of the code management to just call this only when there's enemies to call it on. 
and we use the first enemy in the list, because that's where we construct them going across X, because the first enemy in the list to detect when we hit the left hand side and the, sorry, the last enemy to hit the right hand side and the first enemy to hit the left hand side. Um, and so yes, if there's enemies, we update the, um, the movement. And so when we shoot them off the end, they move further, which is nice. Did you suck? Alright. <laughs> 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 uh, right. We've got five time. Oh, absolutely. Any uh, questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, the people are jumping in. So I'm, I'm on OSX and uh, I do the push events, but I'm not getting my events coming through. I can't get mouse or clicky. Okay, that's all. Push, well, do push handles on my player object, and the player object has. What are the Check the spelling on mouse move. Oh, sorry, on mouse motion and on mouse press. Ah, okay. Yeah, I've the got... names have got to be precise. Okay, I've got on mouse. I had mouse motion and on mouse button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what are we doing now? Oh, women sound. Okay, so we import the uh, sound. Oh, media. Media. Um, and so, like with um, the image stuff, uh, people that knows how to play WAV files, um, if you want anything fancier than WAV files, then you are probably, no, you do have to get um, an additional installable called AVBIN, which is uh, basically a wrapper around FFMP. Yeah. Because um, the FFmpeg don't know anything about binary interfaces because they're tools. So <laughs> the only reason ADBin exists is to put a stable binary interface around FFmpeg. So anyway, that aside... Actually, I have a question about that. Yeah. What was the reason for choosing that? I mean, not very I've got a whole slide on that in oh, my really next yes. session, oh, so right. I'll oh, answer your question then. Yeah. Um, short of it though is that if you use WAV files, you're right to go. Um, you can just play them. No worries. Um, streaming equals false is a thing just to say. What's that doing? Okay, so <laughs> if you leave out the streaming equals false, um, people assume that you just want to stream it in and decode it and play it all at the same time, which is great for really long things. You don't want to load them all up once into memory, decode them, use up your memory, and then play them. So streaming equals false means I'm guaranteeing this is a small file, I'm going to play lots of times. So it'll decode the well, WAV files, not really decoding, but decoding other files, decodes it into memory, keeps it in a buffer if it's open AL, and then um, make sure that playing it is really low latency and really fast, and you can play it lots of times at once, and it just thinks it's a yeah, rather than, oh, it's all good. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, and then once we've loaded our uh, sounds, we can just sound.play when we want them to, to play, and that's all you have to do. Um, <clears throat> You need to also, uh, in your event loop, you now need to dispatch events on media to give it a chance to do some stuff as well, so that it actually fills buffers up correctly and does other things like that. And away we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all okay. Um, okay, so that's sound, that's all cool, but now we need some music. Which is really uh, easy. Um, oh, hang on, this is a new bit. Sorry, I haven't seen this bit. All uh, oh, right, okay, so we're loading a music player for this bit. Why are we loading a music player for this bit? Because we're not strong. Because we are. Yeah, because we are. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, the, the MP3, obviously, this implies that we have AVBin installed um, to do the decoding of MP3s. Um, we actually did, uh, Alex is probably going to talk about this, but we actually did toy with using operating system capabilities to actually do a bunch of this stuff, but um, it turns out to be uh, somewhat of a nightmare, especially on Linux. Um, because you just can't guarantee that the capabilities are there. I'm not going to have anything to talk about if you talk. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Let's go to the first next time <laughs> about stuff. Okay, so uh, the interface is very similar. It's, you know, dot .play. It's just that we've set up a separate player for this, the, the music just so that it just goes. Yeah, one of the things to play, instead of just playing a single source at once, which is what you get from media.load, with a player you can queue multiple sources 
and they'll play without any gaps in between them. So you get gapless playback and it makes sure the buttons are totally full. Up to do that. If you try to do that in code from the high level, you'll get gaps because hey, latency. Um, and you can also control the volume and the spatial positioning and a bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, spatial positioning is cool. Yeah. Three D sound. Called Space Invaders. <laughs> I look for a thing called Space Invaders. It was the second thing I just ran on the TikTok. That one is definitely um, Creative Commons. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? They don't want money for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so we're, we've got 10 minutes uh, now until the afternoon tea break. So I've that solved your problem? The, with the mouse handles? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other bugs? <laughs> yeah, people keep killing eggs. That counts as a bad thing. It's all my fingers. <laughs> it, do, it doesn't want to ease install. Oh, no, it won't. Won't it? Won't it? No, it won't, will it? And oh, no, I'm thinking something else. Uh, uh, um, the other thing is, I downloaded the tarball, and that wouldn't work either. Oh, you've got other issues then. I've done both Ubuntu and OS 10, so it's not a nice idea. Uh, use the dot, um, .dmg file or whatever. Oh, yeah, sure, that here. works, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, come and talk to us. The thing is, the 1.0 release, we say it's stable. It's as stable as we can get it for the beta testers we have. I think um, we had... So, so, we've got 10 minutes of history. Yeah. Um, there was development time for people that lasted maybe a year or more, and during that time, it was the SVN trunk and you have to grab it from SVN, and it would change every week, and so none of the code is stable. So there's a bunch of code that still exists that doesn't work with Piglet anymore, and that kind of sucks. So we went to Alpha, and that's kind of stabilized everything, and a lot of things still didn't work, and that was kind of at the start of last year. And then halfway through last year, um, I made a beta release, which is where I said, I promise not to change the API anymore, and I made a couple of changes after that. Um, the idea with the beta release is to get it tested on a wide variety of computers. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that Linux computers just differ in every kind of way with the number of things you've got installed and the drivers and God knows what you've got on it, so will people work with it? And so there are lots of problems there, but also, unexpectedly, there's also massive differences between different installations of Windows XP Service Pack 2, right? Really. And so the beta phase um, got us a lot of chance to fix up all those problems, and we got it working across a huge bunch of different Windows computers, OS X computers, and there's a lot of Linux computers. But even still, we only had, I think, 1,500 downloads of the final beta 3. So I'm guessing around a slightly less than 1,500 people tried it out. Um, and of those, everyone who reported the bug, we fixed it. With like one or two exceptions, which we just got stumped on. So now that we've entered 1.0, people say, oh, great, okay, it's stable, now I'll try it. That's when we start getting a lot more errors because we're expanding our kind of base. So we're hoping to fix these up. People will improve, obviously. We're not just saying, oh, you know, it doesn't work for you, screw you. We're now we're getting feedback on computers doesn't work on, but um, I think we found that yeah, 1500 isn't bad, and it's improving. Yeah. The best thing to do is not to give up when it doesn't work, but to file a bug report, or if you don't like um, Google's issue tracker, email me or the list. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. So yeah. No, it's always yeah, it's always getting better, um, and we're always finding new ways that open gel installations can be just weird, <laughs> especially with HDI cards. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, do you have any games you sort of cooked beforehand that you could show? What, that one wasn't good enough? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's something that show part the full range of what's possible, sort of thing. Yeah. Talk about something else in part two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, we do have one question on the call. Sorry, um, you mentioned earlier that we would be able to get our hands on that code because I couldn't keep up. No. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, um, well, I'll put out that Linux conf um, address. So that is. At the moment, you can download all of the images and sounds, and I'll check up the source code there too. Sweet. <coughs> um, and there is going to be um, <laughs> presentation mark one, which we rewrote yesterday afternoon <laughs> slash evening. <laughs> this is version two of the this is, Yes, this was written. Really right. <laughs> uh, that's why I got a bit lost in the end there. Um, 
uh, which will actually be turned into a tutorial and I'm hoping a, an actual screencast as well. Um, I'd like to do a screencast of this as well. So um, that'll well, hopefully this will end up on Google Video. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, I think we're only recording with the camera, so... Yeah, you can't um, really read the slides no, very well. No, well, I'll do it with an actual screencast. But we use the laugh track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good to record that. <laughs> Um, okay, so other things that could be added to this little simple game. Uh, obviously, a number of lives. Shoemucks always had a number of lives. Uh, different rows of baddies would be fairly trivial to add. Uh, you could even have them moving different directions and stuff. Um, rounds, levels, speed, speeding up the bullets. Just simply speeding up the bullets is a very old school way of increasing level difficulty as the game progresses. Um, and uh, you know, different baddies and stuff as well. Um, actually, do you want to just quickly show full screen? Okay. There's something to, to show. There's an interesting, there's two schools of thought about full screen, and this is the second <laughs> one. This is my one. <laughs> this is Alex's one. <laughs> okay, so run the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you saw how the game was, you know, a little window at the top of the screen. Wrong directory. All right, so you're in the wrong directory. That won't work. Okay, so now we're actually. <laughs> Something about all right, so um, Piglet, when you ask for a full screen uh, window, um, you get the native resolution of the screen, or the, the, the native you know, resolution that you have active. So we're running a desktop at um, 1024 by 768. That's what we'll get for a full screen window. We don't, we can't ask, you can give it a size and you won't get it. Um, uh, the reason behind, reasoning behind this is that um, scaling to fit windows, to fit screens, invariably sucks a lot and is often done wrong. Like you'll lose aspect ratio and stuff like that as well. So um, it's relatively easy to deal with that inside uh, games, uh, and I think there's actually stuff in the programming guide about how to deal with full screen um, to make your game adapt to uh, yeah. different resolutions. You, you've got basically three options, and you can combine them. One is to use just vector graphics for your application, and all you have to then do is constrain the aspect ratio. So when it scales up to full screen, um, so the only problem with this one is um, that the sprites are the same size. Um, as before, this game would be totally playable, just the gameplay has changed because it's a bigger canvas. Um, so if you could scale the sprites, and the sprites scale well, so you use larger resources, that would work fine. Or if you just use vector resources to start with instead. Another option is to just letterbox it and just you know, put the thing inside a thing. Um, and your third option is to um, just scale it up um, using near, nearest, uh, nearest neighbor filtering, so it looks like you change resolutions anyway. Um, my preferred option is just to keep it in the window if you can't fill, fill the whole screen, because I like to check my email while I'm playing games. It's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you demo constraining the aspect ratio? Just not really, not, not with that not, game. Not game. Okay. Can you mime it? You don't have to. I mean, <laughs> what you do is basically clip it to the, either the largest width or the largest height. Mm -hmm. um, there is some code in the media player example of Piglet. Okay. Media, I'll much show it later, but it just plays videos and uh, music and stuff, and it always makes sure that the video is stretched but maintaining aspect ratio. So the code's in there, it's just a little bit of maths and it's not much. Yeah, it's pretty easy stuff. There was another question. Yeah, there was a hand up the back, but. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I just had a question about the. You said vector graphics. What vector graphics formats are supported? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> but by default, OpenGL is. Yeah, vector graphics. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. talking about points in space, so you just scale them or or not. You, know, you, you, you have your viewport adapt to um, the the screen that you're given. Okay. Yep. Again, this is sorry. This is actually mentioned in the programming guide and some stuff there about this. Why don't you use your OpenGL coordinate system and then the whole game would scale up and the bullets would move faster? Uh, yeah, so Take the same time to go yeah, we chose to use um, just the, the window space coordinates where one pixel is one pixel yeah. um, by default. Again, of course you can change it because it's OpenGL. Um, just because for uh, novices getting in and haven't done OpenGL before, we want to make it just you can put that image at those pixel locations and there's no thought required about dividing yeah. by this. Thing. Makes it very easy. And also, not everything uh, we think is going to be a game. A lot of things are just going to be Windows applications and you need pixel 
kind of things there. But it's just a default choice, and of course you can change it. Absolutely. <laughs> and you can disagree with it. Though, you know, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's really easy to override the the um, the actual the, the viewport that you get by default is actually defined as the on resize handler on the window. Yeah. So you just give it give the window a new on resize handler, which defines your own viewport, which probably be a three D one to do three D graphics, um, and away you go. Rather than the orthographic uh, projection that we get by default, you, you use a perspective projection, um, and again, that's that's really easy to do. So we're finishing up now, but yeah, I just want yeah. to say. We are doing another session. We're not going to be doing more tutorial stuff. I'm just going to talk and show stuff and have some really, really ugly open office slides. Um, so come back to that to hear me talk. Yeah, and I'll play on the computer this time, I think. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're breaking for a afternoon tea. Um, please come back.